Hello Glass Industry, it's Mark from Glass of Football and here we are finally at Glass Tech in Düsseldorf. Hello Glass Industry, it's Mark from Glass Open Book here at Glass Tech 2022. This year we are cooperating with Rondot Group and one of the members is Shippy International Limited. A big name in the industry with over 80 years of experience, the company offers hot glassware handling for both the container and tableware industries, which might sound like not a big deal, however, every container produced on the IS machine has to pass through the wear handling system, which makes this area of production process very important. Shippy supplies innovative and dependable solutions in the field of glass container conveying, layer loading, glass contact materials and synchronous drive systems. And all these solutions fit virtually any type of production, from cosmetic and pharmaceutical containers to the largest champagne bottles. All right, enough of speaking. Let's take a look at what Chepi has brought to Glasstech this year. And to help me with that, please welcome Mark Askew, who is actually the development manager of uh, Chepi and who has actually developed and designed this particular machine. So, Mark, you are the only person who can tell <laughs> everything about this, uh, this machine. Yeah, so we've got the, uh, it's a Speedliner 55. Um, it's a, a, a version of the Speedliner range so it's the, the the 55 is referenced to its cross conveyor speed or synchronous speed uh, which would be its maximum operating parameters um, it's a three axis servo driven uh, stacker or layer loader as people know them the main functions of the machine <coughs> uh, are its ability to synchronize with cross conveyor belt and with the layer belt that allows us to control uh, the, the the movement of the bottles taking them from the cross conveyor into the layer belt. Now, why is it important? Uh, well, obviously we need to keep the containers stable, we need to keep them stuck up straight, uh, and nobody wants a fallen bottle. The, 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 the layer belt tracking is, is a, a key item on this machine. Uh, a lot of factories all report damage to the underneath of the ball. The way the software works is it it's very efficient with its time, which allows us more time at the end of the push to, to move at the, the same speed as the layer belt. Yeah. Because we're moving at the same speed, we don't get any damage underneath the container. Um, and as you can see on the, the video, what this is demonstrating, as the, as the stacker is, uh, the push bar is bringing the bottles off the, cross, off the cross conveyor over the dead plates, when we get to the layer belt, it looks like it stood still. Yes. Well, that's because it's moving at the same speed. Now, we are able, with changing of the parameters, it's possible to actually move the whole diameter of the bottle onto the layer belt at the same speed of the layer belt. Now, this is this is dependent on a lot of other parameters. You can't have, uh, you know, a really big diameter bottle moving. It just takes too much time. You've, you've only got a certain amount of cycle time. Um, but what it what it also does is. The, we get a feedback, we put a sensor onto the layer belt and that feeds back into our system and that actually monitors the layer belt speed and will adjust its own speed accordingly. So if the layer belt yeah. moves, speeds yeah. up, the stacker will push a little bit faster or it'll, it'll, you know, it'll go onto the, the layer belt a little bit faster and obviously slower as well on both sides. Often, uh, the it, it, speed it doesn't happen often, belt. it's usually sort of more of a gradual change in speed over the layer belt. It, it sometimes can be, um, you know, it, it's production driven, so if, 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 if at the cold end they are seeing that the containers, the temperature's not right at the containers, they may adjust the layer belt speed to get the, con the exit temperature right on the containers. So, but it's one less thing for them to worry about then, they know the stacker is just going to follow that uh, and, and, and keep itself synchronised onto the layer belt as well. So it needs to match the speed of the uh, layer belt from the hot end yep. and the layer belt. Yep. So it's two different speeds. Yes. And so that's, that's the one goes faster and yeah. the, one, uh, uh, the second one is... This, and this is where, you know, uh, the, the, the control side of things come into it. As we said, uh, 
the, the maximum speed for this one on the synchronous on the y-axis or the cross conveyor speed is 55 meters a minute yes. now the Lear belt that can potentially be running 250 300 millimeters a minute yes so we've basically got to gather and and some of these layers you know a 5.2 meter layer could potentially have 60 bottles yes. every on every push right. so we've got to then take all 60 of those bottles right we have to come up to it we have to generally sort of approach the bottles mm -hmm. we have to make sure that we've got them all synchronized so that each container's in the pocket we then need to gather them we just come in slowly to gather those containers once we've gathered the containers then we need to start to decelerate them turning them through a 90 degree motion right uh, and decelerate them further mm -hmm. down to the lear belt speed potentially say 300 millimeters a minute so we're going from 55 meters a minute yes. down to 300 millimeters a minute turning them through 90 degrees and decelerating them and then presenting them onto the lear in a perfectly straight line stood up yes and, and that all happens in as you can see this this the machine at the moment this is just it's because of the demonstration uh, we aren't allowed to bolt the machine down onto the floor so we can't run it particularly fast right. it's running at 350 bottles a minute um, but you know it's you can see each cycle on this is is sort of five to six seconds seven eight seconds high speed production lines that can be down to a, a cycle time of less than three seconds a cycle right. so in that three seconds with We've come up to the bottles yeah. at 55 meters, we've gathered them, we've moved them, we've started to decelerate them, we've turned them through 90 degrees, we've slowed down to the Lear belt speed, at th maybe 300 millimeters a minute, we've then waited, we've tracked mm -hmm. you know, half the bottle diameter, three quarters of the bottle yeah. diameter, we've then released them, the machine's then got back really and come back oh. to be ready to pick the next row up in less than three seconds. Wow. Wow. And this does this, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year, doesn't Impressive. stop. Impressive. Uh, so what are the modifications? So this one has 58 uh, bottles per push. Yeah, it's, it, uh, that, the, the number across is, is, as I say, is dependent on a lot of factors. The, the container size, the layer width size, you know, what, what production parameters yeah. are, are involved in it. So on this particular machine, you'll see we've got the four point, what we call a four point lift frame. So we've got the extended arms on the lift. This just affords a lot more stability in the push bar. Mm -hmm. uh, we've currently got the Alp, the airless push bar on, on this particular machine, right. uh, which is now our, our preferred standard because it doesn't require compressed air. This machine doesn't really need any compressed air at all. No cooling air, mm -hmm. um, nothing for the push bar, nothing for the system itself. Yeah. Uh, so we've got the four point lift frame on. It can, if you've got a small layer, you don't necessarily, because the, the, the actual lift frame itself is nearly four meters. So if you've only got a, a three meter layer, you wouldn't want the four meters too wide, it's wider than your layer. So you can just take, you can just take those arms off, just have the standard two, two point lift frame in, 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 the, in the center. Um, with that, we'd have outriggers again for stability. Because you can imagine when, this, when these things are high cycle rates, um, you know, you, you, you do get a certain amount of movement in the push bar. So we have outriggers to support that just to get rid of any vibration. Um, so this interface here, so from here yep. you can uh, program the speed of the movement, yep. Uh, yep. It's the frequency. Everything on here, all commissioning, you do all the commissioning on here, so when you're setting the machine up in the first instance, so all the commissioning pages in here, it just depends what, you've got user rights, so you, you, you can actually set up different user rights. So you've uh -huh. got, say, uh, your operator, so yeah. you, you wouldn't necessarily want your operator to be able to change, say, commissioning data. You know, or, or some of, some of the important parameters, but you may want him to just be able to just just minor changes. Mm. Um, we have we also, a quick a quick reference to the minor changes on this one, the advance and retard. What this allows us to do is just really fine tune the synchronization of the the, the container sitting into the the, the pocket correctly. Um, so then you've got uh, so you've got your operator. Then what you could have is your, your sort of your engineer level. So he might be able to then go in and set the jobs up. So an operator can go and maybe select a job, but he can't change any of the parameters. These are all uh, editable. You can change the however one depends on the factories. You know your level of of, uh, of operators and who you've got available. Yeah. 
so you've got we've got operator engineer then you've got commissioning engineer so this this would be the um, at the factory level mm -hmm. so this guy would be able to set all the parameters up you'd be able to change everything we also have one extra level of, of and it's like an admin it's a Sheppy level yeah that allows us into right into the, the the sort of background of the program so we can do updates and things like that okay. all all these machines also all come with um remote dialing mm -hmm. so if the factory give us access in a, a network point we can dial in so it, it Sheppy back in the uk uh, and even even walking about our all our service engineers have got access and they can basically, if, if, a, if a machine alarms or if a machine stops, they actually get a notification. Mm -hmm. So we know the instant one of these machines has stopped. Oh. Again, it's another level of support we can give to yeah, a customer. For sure. Um, we can do remote updates. You know, we can update the system remotely. We can set, we could set the jobs up for them if they wanted to sort of thing. But, sure. uh, you know, so... Um, but that's obviously dependent upon the factories giving us access into onto a, a network, mm -hmm. onto a... Uh, it's all secure and all everything sort of thing but uh, these are going to be as I say the new range we have the this is the 55 we already have a, 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 a Speedliner S or a 65 which is a slightly bigger machine mm -hmm. we have these we have uh, I think it's approximately 12 12 or 13 of these already under glass um, we put the first production machine in in, uh, in a factory of just about two and a half years ago Wow. Uh, and they've been running since we installed them. I've had no issues with them. We we, we made a choice on on these particular machines, uh, on this range of machines. The the old triflexes used to have a, a, a belt yes. driving the axes. So what we've done on these, these have got uh, uh, they're all a high precision helical bevel uh, rack and pinion mm -hmm. uh, drives on these. So zero backlash, but high reliability. Yeah. you know and, and longevity on the, the, the drive system so you know I, I look to try and reduce uh, the maintenance schedules on the machines right. which you know again factories like that <laughs> um, all right so uh, okay it's clear about this machine and uh, you have brought this because it's like the flagship uh, product of Shippy yes it's it's the, the Speedliner range now, we, we're going to, we have, a, we have a, this 55, we have the 65, and the, there will uh, be some other models coming out. But the idea is that they're all, um, they, they all share some commonality in, in the, the principle of the design. Yeah. But more importantly as well, a lot of the components, so things like the motors, uh, the motors, gearboxes, things like that. If you have a, uh, a 55, and the 65 because you have a high speed line on there but not necessarily you have some smaller machines on there from a spares point of view the motors are all the same yeah the gearbox is the same yeah the whole lift arrangement the lift frame the top on the 55 and the 65 are exactly the same so components are interchangeable so so rather than having to stock oh, a, a motor and a gearbox for that a spare motor and gearbox for that machine one for that machine you just need one for the whole range of yeah. machines so there's that you know that that sort of uh, compatibility between the machines. They all run the same software, nice. just slightly different versions of it, but the operator user interface is, is the same across the range. So uh, thank you, Mark, no, so much no for uh, for explaining everything. It's it's a beautiful piece of engineering, and thank you yep. for your job. Right. <laughs> thank you very much. Okay. Uh, so if you want to learn more about this machine or request it, please find it on Gloss Open Book and you can even contact the company to request further details. It's been Mark from Gloss Open Book. See you very shortly. Goodbye.